Well, hello, my excellencies. I am just thrilled to have you join me on this Tourism Hub podcast episode. I'm deeply humbled you are here watching the show and deeply humbled you are here listening to the show. I am so happy and always get a big buzz when you ping a message and you send me from wherever you are in the world that you've been enjoying these conversations through the Tourism Hub series. Now, without, uh, I guess I'm just going to jump straight into the guests that I have lined up for you today. Uh, Today's topic is all around the theming of travelpreneurship, and I've got the most ultimate guest in this country to be exploring travelpreneurship in the age of gig economy and diversifying and be able to explore avenues in business and in life to pursue passions, which we talk a lot about with guests on the show. Now, the guest that I'm deeply humbled and my honour to have here with me and introduce you to the one and only Lauren Bath. And before I bring her onto the show, let me just give you a little bit of a background in case you are one of the only living people in, (laughs) in the travel and tourism space that you haven't heard of this name and people I see you know if, if you if you may not know about her I'm sure you've heard I, I, it's a very f- familiar name and person and uh, with with great leadership and influence now Lauren has absolutely been deemed Australia's first professional Instagrammer by national media she has pioneered she was really one of the first forerunners in the influencer space She's got an impressive client list, having worked with global destination marketing bodies, including Tourism Australia, Switzerland Tourism, Tourism South Africa, Tourism New Zealand, Canadian Tourism Commission, Visit Finland, Visit Dubai, as well as many major brands such as Plaza New York, Travel Insurance Direct, Vail Resorts, Olympus Australia, Intrepid Travel, you you name it. She's really got a depth and breadth of, of, you know, big client experience. Additionally, and something that was really exciting to me as I followed Lauren's journey along the way from her travel photography empire and her Instagram influence, is that she's also launched and is the co-founder of the Travel Bootcamp an inspirational event that's designed to teach people how to get paid to travel and the creator of the Get Camera Confident, an online photography course for beginners. Her charitable charitable pursuits include running photography tours in Zimbabwe, supporting anti-poaching efforts and conservation and raising awareness of the misuse of animals in tourism. So with an online audience of close to half a million followers, she's not only one of Australia's most powerful travel Instagrammers, she's also a very savvy social media consultant, educator, and I would go as far as to to say a real leading girl boss. I mean, I've enjoyed speaking with with Lauren and, uh, and getting to know her kind of behind the Instagram account, and she's, uh, yeah, Brace yourself, lock yourself in, and we're ready to uh, really deep dive into this chat. So without further ado, my dear Lauren Bath, welcome to Tourism Hub Podcast. Hey. 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 Thank you for having me. I love that intro. Uh, I I love you. And it's so it's so easy to introduce someone with such a stellar background and uh, and just to see the journey, your evolving journey through business and life as a new mum as well, which is a beautiful experience. <laughs> I'm sure you've learnt a lot of, in the last 10 months with your little girl as well. I definitely now, have. <laughs> Now, thank you so much for being here. We've talked a lot about pursuing passion project on the show with with various guests. Stepping into Instagram, please share with us your journey. You know, before the you know, as this evolved into the, the Instagram, the Lauren Bath on Instagram, and what led you to pursue this path? Yeah, I would love to share. I actually have very little experience in tourism before my Instagram journey. In my former life, I was a chef. 
I dropped out of university because I had a passion for cooking. I went into hospitality and worked 15 years in hospitality. Loved to cook, loved food, but ultimately didn't love the, you know, the, the industry, the career. And working in hospitality for many of those who have been in that industry know that it's hard to get a promotion, it's hard to get a pay rise, it's, it's really difficult to get a lot of respect. You just kind of move around, bounce around. So I was just at that age where I was really tired of it, really tired of the whole hospo life and not earning very much and working split shifts and all of that. And at that time, I happened to stumble across Instagram in its very early days, 2011 about a year after the platform first started. And it really became, for me, my creative outlet because food no longer was. I had just, you know, my passion had peaked and was on the way down, I guess would be a, a kind way of saying it. And for me to go out with my mobile phone, my iPhone 4 at the time, and take pictures around the streets just on my mobile and share them to this great community and start to build friendships and relationships there. Like that became the thing that I looked forward to most in my day, not obviously going to work and, and cooking. So I was fortunate to be on early. I was fortunate that I really fell in love with community. You know, people really look at me and consider me a photographer, but I believe that without the community, I would never have taken my photography as far as I did. I loved meeting like-minded people. I continued to improve my photography because I loved the attention that I would get when I posted something uh, really good. And that sort of transcended to me buying a camera, my first camera a few months after I started Instagram and starting to take the platform more seriously. And I was fortunate enough not only to be on early, but to be on just before Facebook purchased the platform for that record-breaking billion-dollar deal, uh, before the Android market came on, uh, at a time where there weren't many people shooting on a camera. It was all very much mobile photography. And all of those things combined meant that when the platform went gangbusters, I was there, I was established, I had a community, I had decent enough photography and improving photography to really capitalize on the, the great traffic that was coming onto the platform. And I managed to get myself up to 200,000 followers in the first 18 months on Instagram, still working as a chef before I saw an opportunity and decided to grab it with both hands. And the opportunity was a way to get out of my job and and try to monetize my creative passion which was obviously photography but really it was Instagram and if I if I really asked myself what I wanted to be doing if I didn't have to pay uh, if I didn't have to earn a living um, and and pay my way through life I would want to be taking pictures and sharing them on Instagram and and doing all that whilst traveling and, and going to beautiful new places so I I did actually write those three things down photography travel and Instagram and made the bold decision to quit my job using my 200,000 followers at the time as leverage to get a foot in the door at a time when nobody was doing this and there was no other professional Instagrammers for me to look up to and aspire to be just balls to the wall like I, this is what I want I'm gonna I'm gonna do it there's no better time than now and luckily for me that was a successful endeavor I've been uh, working for myself for around eight years my career has changed dramatically and where I started is not where I am now but the really beautiful thing about that is that when you do follow your passions and when you are really authentic and, and honest with yourself when new opportunities present themselves, you can really wholeheartedly grab them and see where they lead you. So that's a bit of the backstory, I guess. And what a great backstory it is. It's such a, and, and that defining, and particularly at the time of this recording, we're coming to see the end of one of the undeniably most challenging years in people's personal and professional lives. And making that switch, and I and I think a lot of people will be, you know, regrouping and recalibrating, not only because it's 2020 at the time of this recording, but also at this transition of coming into the new year. Do you remember the, that defining moment of you making that switch to go, this is this, what was, was, the, was it an opportunity? Was it, did a, a project opportunity come or was it a feeling? Do you remember where you were, that aha moment that you had, that this yeah, is it, absolutely. I'm, I'm going in? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. Um, I'd gone to work on New Year's Eve 
uh, cooking in the kitchen and we had a kitchen hand that didn't arrive to work that evening. So I was washing dishes at age, I think I was 31 or 32, late at night, you know, really hoping that we'd finish up early enough to enjoy our New Year's Eve. And after I finished work, I was over at a friend's house and we were making New Year's resolutions. And without even thinking about it, my New Year's resolution was, I, and the words I used was to quit my shitty job, which is unfair. It was actually a pretty decent job and my boss was great. But anyway, the next day I went to work, I was a little bit hungover and I was just ranting about the fact that I don't want to do this anymore. This isn't my passion. This isn't what makes me excited anymore. I I really just had to try this new thing. Like I had to see if there was something else out, out there. And I ranted and raved all day to my best friend, who was also my head chef. And I got to the end of that day or the end of the split shift, um, went home, sat down with my family and said, I think I'm going to quit my job and sort of got their support around it and quit the next day. I had no opportunities at that point. There was absolutely nothing on the cards. I'd never been paid as a creative person. I didn't know if there was an appetite for Instagram influencing. And yet when I quit my job the next day, sat down with my boss and, and let him know that I had to give this thing a chance, I later took a break during that same morning and there were three job opportunities in my inbox. So the universe had instantly said, like, you've done it. You've done the brave thing and here is the here is your reward. And all three of those jobs panned out and, and ended up being my first paid opportunities in the travel industry. And what an absolutely awesome story and and. Yeah, like I still look back at that and it's it's so crazy to think that I was so quickly rewarded for making that decision because I've always played it safe my whole life. That was the boldest and bravest thing and scariest thing that I've ever done. And to be rewarded so quickly like that was, yeah, it was pretty amazing. Uh, and it's so tr true that the universe rewards the brave. So it doesn't, yeah, it's it's incredible. You hear it. You hear those things in the, like, the Instagram quotes, but to see this is real life stuff, that it's, yeah, have the courage to give it a go. But what I also love about your story, Lauren, is that, you know, having a side gig or having a passion, it's not just in your head. You are actively pursuing this on the daily. You built a community. I mean, this is building a community of 200,000 Followers, albeit it was a you know it was a different time, but regardless, it's something you invested in for some time or you know a year and a half of your time. So you did it sustainably as well. That you built some type of validity around your concept to give you that that drive, uh, which is which is incredible. And fast forward now into travel boot camp. And see, we are recreating our moment, Lauren, from our first, because you've given me goosebumps again. Like, it, it just keep evolving. You are constantly, uh, I guess, you are very invested in your personal and professional development. You don't sit on your laurels and go, I've made it, I'm almost, you know, I've hit 200,000, 300, 400,000, and that's it. You're always pushing and trying new things. And what I love about Travel Boot Camp is now you are imparting your experiences in your and your knowledge to help others that want to pursue the same path. Now, with this, what have been like your success from Instagram and building a business from scratch in a creative space? How has that served and helped you launch the Travel Boot Camp? Yeah, it's it's really interesting. And I, I did mention earlier that for me, community came before photography. And I also love that you said it was a sustainable way to build a community. I was actually spending around eight hours a day on Instagram back in those first 18 months. It was very unhealthy. Um, I was even <laughs> busted by my boss one, one Saturday night service. I was in the cold room checking my Instagram notifications. I nearly got sacked for that one. Maybe it would have been good if I was sacked for that one. But, um, you know, the, the interesting thing with the travel boot camp and the travel boot camp was born basically because I met Georgia Rickard. Uh, Georgia, for those that work in travel, probably know her as the editor for Australian Traveller magazine, which she held that role for about four years. And Georgia had come to me with an idea to start a conference that teaches creative people how to get paid to travel. And given that our expertise was travel journalism and travel editing with Georgia, travel photography and travel Instagram with me, and we also um, pulled in a travel blogger to teach about travel blogging, it was, yeah, the, the premise of it was to teach the, the business of travel. 
And the really interesting thing about our very first conference was that we had no proof of concept. We'd never done it before. We'd never run an event. We didn't know if what we were going to teach would be useful or valuable or, you know, or good enough for people. And yet we had a dream and, and we believed we had wisdom to impart. And starting an event is quite overwhelming. It's um, it's quite scary. It's You have to really get over your own, your own stupid stories of what you can and can't do. But the really, really interesting thing about that event was that when we started to sell tickets, pretty much everyone that purchased a ticket to that very, very first travel boot camp was somebody that had met me through Instagram and had some kind of a one-on-one -on -one personal interaction with me because I pride myself on answering my DMs. I pride myself on replying my comments. I pride myself on my relationships. And it's never, ever something that I've done strategically because I want something out of people. It's always just been that I've, I've loved it. Like I love community. I love talking to people. I'm extroverted. And all of these conversations and, and the way that I'd helped people over the years and given free advice and encouragement and, in, and inspiration, all of these people came back after they'd purchased their ticket and said like, hey, Lauren, you know, I just want you to know that you helped me three years ago with monetizing my photography and I've never forgotten it. And I'm, I, you know, I'm really stoked to support you for your first event. And in fact, somebody even flew over from Spain to come to that first event. And we were like, holy shit, we had, oh, it was less than 100, but more than 80, say 90 people come to the first event. Tickets were $500 a ticket. And it was it was a success. And we've been doing that, Georgia, myself and Liz was our co-founder. We've been doing that event for five years when late last year, Liz made the difficult decision to walk away from the business based on where her career was taking her. And Georgia and I decided to go all in, pedal to the metal, let's really focus on this thing and, and really serve people at the highest level. And given that I was heavily pregnant at the time and I knew I wouldn't be traveling this year, it seemed like a really good time to actually focus on that. So this year, we set out with a, a business plan. You know, we had all of our planning done. We wanted to crack our first million this year, not for, you know, the sake of the money, but for the sake of how many people we could help and serve. We sat down, we, we worked it all out, we reverse engineered it, and then obviously COVID hit. I had a newborn baby, COVID hit. We had one event on sale for this year. Uh, it was in October in Melbourne and we no longer could have an event. And also we couldn't really teach about travel because nobody was traveling. So we were really stuck in a place where, what are we going to do? Are we, are we just gonna say, well, there's nothing, there's nothing we can do, it's COVID. We, you know, <laughs> wipe our hands of it, it's all out of our control. Or are we gonna try and serve people in another way? So we had a look at historically what are some of the biggest problems or biggest challenges of the people that come to our events and how can we create a program or a course or a, an event that serves them at the highest level to get past that in the meantime while people can't travel. And we started a new event, a new virtual event. We took our flagship event virtual this year and we started some new programs. Uh, we're currently doing a six-month program, uh, a relatively high ticket item for people that are really, really looking to actually break into the industry and make money. Lots of mindset wrapped in. We've brought in a mindset coach to help people with that aspect of, of success. And we've just absolutely killed it this year. And, and we've helped so many people. And that all starts with community, right? Because people won't buy from you unless they trust you. And, and all that trust that I was accidentally building over the years just through being authentic and wanting to help people has really led led the business to be where it is right now. And of course, our excellent marketing and, <laughs> and everything else that we've, we've done to work on the business. But yeah, it's been a pretty incredible year and, and it goes to show how far it goes when you give without expectation of getting anything in return. And so much about what I love, what you share, Lauren, and just your whole ethos is how much you can get in your own way. I love you said, get over stupid stories you tell yourself when it is, when it is that trying that new thing doesn't necessarily mean quit your job, but there's something bubbling inside of you. Sometimes the only thing that's stopping you is what, you know, the, the, the self-talk. Um, having a mindset coach in there, and I know that's something that has been very prominent in your journey in making that in investment, and I can relate to that too. I think part of growth is recognising where you know, establishing those gaps with in your business um, and community, being so community-focused that the more people I help, the more 
yeah, the, the business, there's no other way forward than the business and growth because you're coming from a place of serving. When it comes to partnerships, so you've got co-founders now, like from running a solo game for some time mm-hmm. in your Instagram and travel photography to then partnering with with Georgia uh, or Liz or your new, so your mindset coach that's come on board. How important is that establishment in partnerships? What do you look for in a partner that you've been able to establish now where you've gone into more of a collaborative approach in business? Yeah, look, to be honest, when Liz, Georgia and I set out to start this business, we were all hot messes personally. Uh, Georgia was literally about to have a nervous breakdown, which she did have, a very bad, long, painful nervous breakdown. Uh, Liz was in a really bad place, very overwhelmed, not a lot of self-care, taking on too much work. I was also very overwhelmed, didn't know myself at all, had no idea how anxious I was, kept everything inside. And as you can imagine, three women in those states in a business together did not exactly pan out (laughs) easily. We, uh, you know, we had a lot of issues. And the really interesting thing about business is, and I'm sure a lot of people will relate to this, is that it just, it stirs up so much personal stuff and it's very triggering. You know, you, you pour your heart and soul into your business. And for those of us that are actually brave enough to put ourselves out there in business, whenever you have a, a difficult client or negative feedback or flippant comments from online trolls, it can it can actually affect you energetically for hours, sometimes even days, depending on the environment. So Georgia, Liz and I were having a tough time. You know, we didn't see eye to eye. We didn't know each other very well. We we triggered each other massively. There was always quite a fair bit of angst and <laughs> angst and bad energy amongst us. I mean, we loved each other, don't get me wrong. We were friends and we loved each other, but we were coming together with a shared vision and we we didn't know each other's stories. We didn't know each other's triggers. We didn't know each other's best style of working and communication. And until we actually stopped and figured that stuff out, which we did, um, things were were challenging. And the the funny thing about how we did that is we actually hired a coach. We were already committed that year to working with a marketing coach at great expense. You know, we'd, we'd put quite a lot of money on the line to upskill in marketing, to get our funnel sorted and, and learn more about our target audience and all of that stuff. And with the money that we'd invested, we were doing great things on the business side of things, but still not working very cohesively as a team. And we happened to completely by accident meet a mindset coach uh, at a yoga retreat in the Blue Mountains at a women in tourism event. And Kate ended up spending two days with the three of us coaching us on mindset. And she was just so impressive that after those two days, we were like, we need you, like we need to work with you. And we signed an eight month coaching contract with Kate, which you know, we were spending money that we didn't have. We actually had to just count on the fact that all of this money we'd invested. And I think it was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, $60,000, I think we spent on coaching that year. That was last year. Wow, that was only last year. Uh, $60,000 we spent on coaching that we didn't have. (laughs) And yet, everything that we were taught did actually pan out. And towards the end of the year, we sold our very first program and we made a a really big profit and all of that money came back more than double, more than double fold. And when that coaching contract ended, we all kind of went our separate ways. I mean, Liz obviously made the really tough decision that the business was not what she wanted to focus on. And we were able to have a beautiful, amicable discussion. And Liz walked away and we remained the best of friends. Georgia and I decided to to forge forward. And this year when we needed to do the the classic COVID pivot, we spoke to Kate and decided to bring her in as a partner, as a a contributor to a couple of courses and programs. And through that experience, we have actually discovered that we just are so aligned in our vision, in our values, in what we want to do in the world, the change that we want to be in the world. And we are now merging businesses with Kate so that all of our offerings have such a beautiful mix of skills, which you obviously need, um, but also mindset and getting past limiting beliefs. And between the three of us and what we've had to overcome, plus what we teach, it's it's 
such a formidable trio. It truly is. And given the fact that we know each other so well and, and we really prioritise knowing ourselves, personal development, self-development, self-work, it means that if we ever, if there's ever a fight or we're feeling triggered, we can be like, the story that this is bringing up for me is, and, you know, we have we have names for our alter egos, our survival states, and, and we make it funny and we do what we have to to get ourselves out of those states. And when you manage to find that kind of relationship or balance with a business partner, that is fucking magic. Like we, we are actually unstoppable because whatever it is that we need to grow in, we will grow. And if somebody needs to pull somebody else up, we will do that. And, and we know ourselves, we know each other, we love and respect each other. We have everything that it takes. And we're so excited to see where the business is going to go next year. I, I, I'm so excited for you. And it's such an important messaging for anybody that's listening, you know, particularly after a pandemic. Now you've had almost, you, you had a heads up on this. You kind of, Makia, your beautiful little girl, that you had to start thinking about how am I going to do business differently through becoming a mother, that the travel mm. scene, that, that I'd have to reimagine. So it's come, but particularly dealing with any type of, uh, psychological well-being in business, particularly in unforeseen circumstances. What I love about what you share is making that investment, even like just recognising that it's such a critical investment in yourself and in your own well-being to get through, um, yeah, all of those blockages that, you know, I'm sure, I mean, I can relate and if you cannot relate, yeah, that would be... Tell don't yeah. open the box. Don't open the box. <laughs> we always joke. Oh, if you don't know about it, you don't want to know. <laughs> no, I mean, they say that a business can only grow as, as fast as the person in charge of the business. And that's so true. Like if you don't grow personally as a person, you know, I, I think about, I love the concept of being triggerless. You know, it's it's obviously, it's never going to happen. I mean, the, the personal work goes on forever. But for me, my aim is to be triggerless. And, and it's a practice. And so when something triggers me, whether it's a, a client or a customer or one of my beautiful business partners have accidentally triggered me, <laughs> I, I really try to get to the bottom of what the story is behind it. Because when you take all of the emotion out of what happened, more often than not, it's actually nothing happened. Like, Georgia asked me if I'd done my masterclass and then you apply all these stories like Georgia thinks I'm not good enough and all of this other stuff gets layered on top and, you know, peeling that away and figuring out where it comes from in your childhood or wherever, whoever taught you that at, at any point in your life, it's so powerful because it just means that you're not going to lose energy on that thing. You're not going to sit there and, and cry and then lose your whole day and then be overwhelmed and not feel good enough for the rest of the week. You can just actually be like, oh, oh, yeah, somebody told me that once when I was little and it's just a bullshit made-up story and I am good enough and Georgia didn't mean that at all and I took it out of context because of my own stories and let's just get on with the work. <laughs> oh, my God, I love that, just to, to, to work to a state of being triggerless. I love that so much. That's, a yeah, another gold nugget from Lauren Barr, like just to be able to move on because the, the, that's what they are. You get something happens with you, it's like, oh, what was that? Guy? That's just, you know, I've just, that, that's, that's hit somewhere. Um, but to be able to, what you've just shared is really taking responsibility, take, you take ownership of that, that no, it's not the other person, like let me just deal with that and move on. The quicker we move on, the, the, the better. I love that. Well, they say, they say that you can't control what people have said or done to you. You can only control how you react to it. And at the end of the day, if somebody has said or done something that's upset me, then I can choose to be upset or I can choose to figure out why I'm upset and move on with it. That, that is my choice. That is in my power to do that. I can't change what they've done. I can only change myself. And that is so important even in it, as you're building a team around you for your business outside. Is that something like having those open conversations and knowing when you've been triggered, like how do you decide whether I'll just deal with that or I, we need to talk about this? Do you have a strategy to, uh, around that? Like, what's what do I let go of, and what? No, this is this is not on. Uh, it really depends on how I'm feeling inside. If it's just a little twinge, and I I think I can swallow it and go back to it later, I, I generally do. Uh, if I'm feeling quite triggered and I can't close my mouth, and I'm with Georgia and Kate, uh, yeah, we absolutely, and and we will say like, oh, I'm feeling quite triggered, and then often <laughs> Kate the coach, right? So Kate will be like, oh. 
you know <laughs> what what what's the trigger like what's come up for you and and yeah mm. if we, if I feel like I have to get it out then and there same with Georgia and Kate um, we do we just get it out then and there and then we move on and which it, is you just know, a selfie isn't it yeah absolutely yeah. like it's just all about getting on with things right like not not losing yourself to to getting into those low states which of course we're always going to get into low states and we're always going to get into high states and but at the end of the day the more you can operate in the middle <laughs> you know balance not too high not too low just able to make smart good decisions and move forward then the quicker you can move towards success the life of your dreams <laughs> the vision whatever wow. it is the the lot and what it, your personal journey uh, as a mum I love that you shared so authentically in a recent post that you, I've had this journey this is why you follow me for the travel photography and the beautiful places but now I'm in this new phase talk to me about how how you kind of traverse that be, between now yourself as Lauren Bath the brand mm. and knowing how much to <sighs> share that this is part of me too not being overly protective about that and giving more of yourself because I thought that was such a beautiful post just openly sharing how much you were on the fence around mm. that and sometimes you know I know personally that you know I've, I've sat there too and I can procrastinate overthinking sometimes around yeah. is, you know should I shouldn't I is this too much do they like yeah and then you end up doing nothing yeah, I've I've always been very honest and very authentic on my Instagram account. I believe it's what um, actually attracts people to me. Uh, also, given the fact that I'm not the typical influencer, you know, the the twenty something blonde in the bikini having the the brunch on the water in in Bali. But you know, it's it's been really interesting for me with Instagram this year because I'm obviously not taking photographs as much. I I'm not traveling, and the things that most people have followed me for have been traditionally my travel photography. Uh, when I do show up, I show up and talk about what's going on for me, um, really honestly. Uh, but there has been a period of time this year where I've felt myself getting quite overwhelmed and guilty for not being on Instagram as regularly as as I used to. And I, I've come out the other side of that and I've just realised that it's not a priority for me at the moment. I, I'm growing and scaling this business that I love. I have a daughter. I am not sleeping. You know, I've got a 10-month-old. I haven't slept all year. And at the end of the day, if I don't feel good, I don't want to just, I don't want to put that out there. And I've just had to reconcile with the fact that I need to be really really kind and gentle with myself this year and any new mum that has been through this phase especially with a challenging sleeper will know that it's it is hard like it's really hard to go through your days feeling so fatigued and still moving forward and, and things do have to fall off often it can be your relationship with your husband or partner it can be cooking healthy meals, it can be cleaning, it can be your your work, it can be your social media, but you cannot do everything when you're in that state. And I, I also, you know, I love my daughter. I want to spend time with her. I, I crave spending time with her. That's a priority for me. So my priorities at the moment are my daughter, my family, my business partners, and the people that we serve. And if that means that for a little while in the short term, I, I can't show up on Instagram as consistently as I used to, I'm I'm happy with that. Like I, I've, I've really, really come to terms with that. And I know that I love Instagram and I know that I love sharing my journey and I know that it will come back. I know that it will come back when the time is there and the headspace is there and the freedom is there and all of that. I'll just, I'll start showing up and I'll start putting it all out there again and it will be a beautiful thing. And until then, I don't want to feel bad about it. You just, you, the more you feel bad about feeling bad, the worse you feel. So. Oh. Acknowledge the fact that you're not doing something the same way that you used to, and then just move on and and just know that when the time is right, you you'll do the thing. You know what? That's just the clarity that you have. Like you could just feel growth in your clarity. Like for you to be able to articulate that with such conviction of this is where I'm at. These are my priorities. And automatically you feel there's no guilt because, yeah, you're kind of on the other side. It's just like I, I, I'm in speaking with you, I think, for anybody that's listening and inspired by that, I just think, wow, to just live with such clarity of where, where you're at and to, and to acknowledge 
and to acknowledge that, you know, if if you if you're feeling the funk, just get on with what your day is presenting itself and work to your to your priorities. Now flicking the switch to the small tourism business operator. So yeah. the small you know, small to media. I mean, I call them experience makers, the experience makers of our industry that are out there, the, the, the tours, the attractions, the ballooning operators. When it comes to working with influencers and keeping, keeping these guys top of mind and working with creatives that have built a community that are very protective around could you talk to us and share some of, when it comes to brand collaborations and aligning yourself, what are some best practice examples of being approached and what are some terrible, like what are some like don'ts that you can share? Like when that might be a strategy moving forward for a lot of businesses in influencer, because now it's got its own place in the, on the marketing shelf. I mean, now it's a new module in digital marketing courses, influencer marketing, where you've been kind of like a, a founder of the whole concept. <laughs> would, uh, yeah, because it's such a great story. I mean, even you say you were there even before Facebook kind of acquired Instagram, in a nutshell, what are some of the best practices of what you see influencer marketing is as an influencer? And, uh, yeah, you know, what are the best ways for businesses to approach that that might not have the budgets but have got some amazing experiences that they could that they could part with or, and share? Yeah. I, I could literally talk about this for the next day. <laughs> you know, I, I know everything there is to know about influencer relationships and, and working with brands. And I'll try and be as succinct as possible and, and give some key takeaways here. Um, but first of all, relationships are everything. Whether you're the brand or the influencer, uh, having the right relationships is really important. So for myself, if I'm looking to work with tourism boards, which I was, I followed a lot of tourism boards and I was a big fan of the, the posts that they would put up. I would regularly like, I would regularly comment, I would get myself on a first name basis with the people that worked at that tourism board. If you're a brand, if you're a hot air balloon tour operator and you uh, are looking to potentially bring some influencers out for a hot air balloon ride, you would follow potential influencers, people that you like, people that market or, or talk to your demographic. Uh, people who it seems like their brand values or, or their, their personal values align with your personal values or your brand values. Uh, people that seem like decent human beings, like do not underestimate that. Uh, following people that are just generally seem polite and generous online and and do the, the whole no like trust, you know, get to know people, uh, get to like them. And you'll find that over time you, you do start to trust people that you've only met through the internet. So from there, if you were looking to hire an influencer to work with you on a brand uh, endorsement campaign or, or some kind of a marketing campaign as, a, as an operator, a tour, a tour operator, you would probably reach out via email. You know, I get a lot of DMs, but I, I find that really irritating, to be honest. And the reason is once you've opened a DM, it's, it's opened, you, you feel obligated to reply it straight away. Often when I'm looking through DMs, I'm just in like Instagram mode. I'm just like scrolling and socializing and it's all about community. And all of a sudden there's this thing that I have to put some thought into. Um, email is the professional standard. It allows me to reply you professionally. It allows me to reply you with a media kit attached and to actually have the conversation in a place that is suitable for that conversation. Uh, be really clear with your expectations or or what you want. You know, as as all of us know, we're, we're so busy. You know, brands are busy, operators are busy, influencers are busy. Nobody wants to do the work for you. If you want to hire an influencer, it's, it's <laughs> how do I phrase this? It's frustrating. It's frustrating for me when a brand reaches out via DM and says, hello, we like, we'd like to work with you as an influencer. Can you tell me a little bit more about your services? Because unless I have that as a template, which I actually do because I get that a lot, you know, it really requires me to put some time and thought into replying that inquiry. Whereas if you've done your due diligence and you've done some research and you know a little bit about how it works and all of this information is out there on the internet, you can reach out via email, find an email address. Hi, Lauren. Uh, I'm a hot air ballooner operating out of Logan. 
we are really looking to attract more locals to come experience our hot air ballooning tours uh, next month. And we were wondering if you're free to come on a hot air balloon tour. At the moment, budgets are really tight due to COVID, but we're hoping that this is something on your bucket list that you would be prepared to do for free and the expectations would be really low. For example, a, you know, a branded Instagram story um, regards blah, blah. Now, the good thing is if I already know this person and we've been chatting on Instagram, then I already have a bit of a relationship and, and I might be disposed to wanting to help them. Uh, Putting that aside, though, they've reached out over email so I can reply in my own time. They've given me a clear idea of their budget um, and, and their expectations of what they would want out of me. So I have all the information that I need to make a decision and reply them in a way that's not going to waste everybody's time. Whereas if they had have sent an open ended, like, tell me what you do, you know, then it's the back and forth and it's the this and I have to send them that. And then they it's the tiptoeing around the money conversation. And it's just it's wasting everybody's time. If you don't have budget, say you don't have budget. If I can't do it without a budget, I'll say I can't do it without a budget. And it just moves the conversation along a lot faster. Uh, I have had a number of people that I've supported this year who have just reached out and wanted to send me things or wanted me to talk about their their pivot or whatever it is they're doing during COVID. And I'm really happy to help if I know that person, if I have a relationship with them already. And I guess that's a, another final piece is that you don't, if you don't have a relationship with an influencer, especially if there's somebody experienced and talented and established, it is quite rude to reach out to them and they've never heard of you before and ask them to do something for you for free. Uh, that is quite impolite. Um, unless there's a good reason behind it or a, a good reason or incentive for that person to want to listen to you. Uh, I talked about making sure that they're a decent human being. Best way to get to know an influencer is to follow their account, turn on post notifications, see what sort of captions they write, how they reply and respond and, and you know, communicate with their audience, get an idea of what is important to them in their lives and yeah, see if it is a good fit for you and if, if their followers are the sort of people that would potentially like your brand or product offering. That's all I can think of off the top of my head. <laughs> it's, it's brilliant. I love, you know, relationship is such a key. You mentioned get to know, like, and trust. Like this is something, the whole industry is based on relationships. So that's no different in working with an influencer. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, you are protective. You, I mean, look at that, eight hours a day in the beginning of hustle and getting to know you know, seeking the opportunities. This is a community that you've built out of your own back and you're protective of that too. And I mm. love what you said, be professional about it. I, I think that's a really key point that Instagram, it's still a place, it's it's a social platform. So coming out with an Instagrammer, yeah, that can, you can start on the, on the back foot. So that is a, that's some brilliant advice there. Now, what I love about what you do and something that I really appreciate, you mentioned captions and reading captions, like the copy that goes. So where photography is really the front and centre, it's the visual medium, I think we can't discount how good you are at your copywriting. Was that something always because you are quite confident and you are, you're so beautifully... you you're so beautifully spoken has that been something that's naturally come to you where you could really bring out a photo through story in what you write in the caption and how much you know how have you found that in your journey the importance of oh my lord ah I'm sorry Lauren it's all right oh I put it on why would that happen excuse me everyone we'll cut that bit out I am uh, so <laughs> So just saying, so Lauren, with your captions and, and bringing out the story, you know, pictures tell a thousand words, but we mentioned earlier about your captions and you're so beautifully, I love also what you, how you, you know, your copy and how you really complement a photo in what you say, uh, you know, what you say in the caption. Has that been something, has that been a work in progress or has that been something that has really come naturally to you and how have you found that in your journey to really make a difference in, you know, in, in what you say to go with what you, what you post? Yeah, look, it's a really good question. And to be honest, I never used to write long captions. I was quite shy about it. 
I was definitely not shy in comments threads. And in fact, if you were to scroll back all over Instagram eight or nine years ago, you'll see that I was everywhere amongst my communities. But I guess I just didn't put myself out there in that way. I let the image speak for itself. And it wasn't until I was working in tourism when I came against one of my first, I don't want to use the word haters. What's a nicer word for hater? Critics. <laughs> I had a critic, somebody who um, who was, was trying to work in the influencer industry and didn't think that I was doing a good enough job, uh, an armchair critic. And one of the pieces of feedback that got back to me was that he said I didn't write enough information about the destinations I was visiting in my caption. And rather than sit there and be like, oh, well, screw you, like, <laughs> you don't know me, I actually stopped and I was like, oh, actually, no, he's right. I, I would often, you know, I'd, I'd post a beautiful destination shot and it would be geotagged and my caption might be something like it was a beautiful sunrise this morning. So I was like, yeah, that's really interesting. And I started to, um, to include a little bit more information about the shoot or the destination or what I was experiencing when I took the photograph. And it did grow from there quite natively. And for me, given that I had this, this cool audience and community of people that knew me quite well and, and you know, we, we had good rapport, I, I really, I had quite a lot of people reading those longer captions and then they'd get, you know, lots of back and forth in the comments thread and, and it kind of really grew from there. And, and the more I started to open up, and share more about myself and my stories and, and what I was doing, the more that I felt comfortable doing that. And there's really not a whole lot that I wouldn't share on Instagram these days. You know, I've talked about the birth of my daughter. I've talked about my overwhelm. I've talked about my personal development journey. I've talked about the personal development work I've been doing this year and the breakthroughs that I've had. It's it's just you know, it's it's vulnerability, right? It's it's the V word that we all hate to talk about so much, but but allowing yourself to be yourself in a public space is vulnerable. And if you're really fortunate like me to have a great community of people around you, it's it's ultimately really empowering and really lovely. And for me now the caption is sacred. Like I basically write the caption and choose a photograph to go with it. Like yeah. <laughs> I mean I yeah I if I'm not working, I mean, if I'm working, it's a different story. If I've got tourism content that I'm putting out and stories to tell for the client, it's a little bit different. But when I'm between jobs, as I have been all year, you know, I'm really thinking about what I feel like saying to people and then I'm just putting any old picture in. The, the caption has a lot more thought to it. So, yeah, I think it's a really powerful space to to utilise on social media. And this doesn't just go for someone like me. You know, this goes for tourism operators as well. And, you know, we, we talk a lot about utility content uh, at the Travel Boot Camp and, and all of our courses and programs. And utility content is content that educates, it entertains, it inspires. So if you are a cafe, you could share a recipe. That's utility content. If you are a balloon operator, you could tell funny stories about ballooning through the ages. And that would be something that's educational, right? Something that people can learn from, some history. Uh, you could entertain people with memes or jokes. There's, there's so many different ways that you can use both the content itself, the image or the video, whatever it is, and the caption to give people value in their lives because the whole social media economy is about giving value. It's not about advertising. It's not about me, me, me. It's about... How can I share something in a way that it will resonate in your life, inspire you or educate you or entertain you or give you something in your life? And if you don't have that front and centre of everything that you do on social media, you won't succeed. Giving value and utility content, so, so good. And I love that you've said it essentially, I mean, what an ultimate way to use your gap year and maternity leave per se <laughs> to launch <laughs> like tap into your entrepreneurial, you know, you've gone next level with scratching an entrepreneurial itch there with the travel boot camp. And I'm curious, how much have you seen the change in building a platform? Because now with the travel boot camp, have you really seen how how much of a difference it is to build community in 2020 versus when you first started? Well, look, the I'll answer that part of the question in a moment. But the, the really interesting thing about 2020 is that people are fed up with their lives, right? Like COVID has absolutely taken everything that we held dear. It's For a lot of us, it's taken our jobs. It's taken our freedom to travel. It's taken our identity. It's, it's really stirred up 
a lot of change in people and change in a way that you can't avoid. Like you, you literally can't avoid the impacts of what COVID has done to the planet. And for that reason, I think it's been a year that has left people really open to having a bit of a breakthrough or having a bit of a having the space to do some personal work or, or to question what it is that they really, really want out of life. So as far as our community and, and the big reason for our success this year is that we sell a dream, like we sell hope. We sell people the belief that this thing is possible for them. And all of a sudden, because of COVID and because people's jobs have become less secure or because they've realised that actually that's not what they really want to do and they're wasting their lives, they've been a lot more receptive to actually explore what their dream life could look like for them and, and taking that power back for themselves. Mm. And that has been really, really awesome to see. You know, we have grown our community so much this year and the breakthroughs that we're having in our programs, the amount of people that have gone on to have crazy success, just what people say about us in the public forum, you know, on Facebook, seeing people that I know have been through our programs, not even posting on our community pages, posting to their Facebook friends and just saying, thanks to the travel boot camp, you know, what I've what I've changed about myself this year and and where I am now compared to the start of the year. Like it's just, it's absolutely amazing how open people are to change right now. And how that has, how we've seen that play out in our community. From an Instagram point of view, you know, growing community, at the moment there's more people online than ever before in the history of mankind. Like everybody's online because our lives have changed so much. And the, you know, for everybody that's online, like, yes, it is more difficult to capture people's attention because there's so much content out there. And for me, given that I'm a photographer, a stills photographer, and a little bit older and, you know, going through a lot of personal development work and becoming a mum, I'm not doing the dancing TikToks about, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not doing the trending viral TikTok videos. And that's the stuff that people are really loving at the moment. So, you know, if there's, if there's a type of viral or trendy or, or content that's doing really well, I think a lot of people sit back and they're like, oh, well, if I'm not going to be doing that, there's no way that I can get ahead. And it's not what it used to be. And the competition's too fierce on social media these days. But actually, that's not true at all. You know, it, it's all about putting out content that is really valuable to people, serving people, being authentic. Like, don't do, so, don't do something just because everybody else is doing it. You know, you, you won't see me <laughs> at the moment anyway um, on TikTok doing, doing the TikTok viral dances. It's, it's not who I am. And yet I, you know, I still have a beautiful community on Instagram because I'm authentic. And when I do show up, I show up to serve and... And I, I really believe that if you're starting from scratch or if you're starting from, you know, a lower following at the moment, like will you get 200,000 followers in the next 18 months? Probably not, not unless you're some savant photographer that's come out of nowhere. But you don't need that many followers. You know, what do you need them for? I, I really love the philosophy of a thousand true fans. And you can read about that online. Just Google a thousand true fans. And basically it states that if you have a thousand people following you who know, like and trust you, you know, the sort of people that will buy anything that you sell, that's all you need for your entire life. If you release one new product or service a year and all 1,000 people buy that, you're set. So try not to think about quantity of followers and think more about quality and, and serving the people that you do have. And when it comes time to sell something, whether it's an ebook or a hot air balloon tour or a trip or whatever it is, you, you have a, an audience of people that know, like, and trust your brand, you or your brand, however it is you're doing it. And it, it becomes easy then. Uh, that is just so encouraging for, for anybody where, you know, as a tourism business or you, uh, you're an aspiring photographer or creative, any type of creative person that you have something in you that you are doing on the side that you are starting to, the seed has been planted in you to explore that further. What an, you know, that is just such uh, yeah, a beautiful parting advice from from you. Serving, being authentic, adding value. I think that's the biggest one. Be you know, putting things out there that that are of value. As we start to wrap things up, because I could really um, keep it, talking to you for a long time. A quick excellence round uh, that I like to have with guests. Um, uh, my dear Lauren, in the beginning, what was the one thing that was holding you back? 
from taking that plunge, if you can recall, whether it's, you know, to, 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 can you remember outside of the, uh, outside of the stories? What, what yeah. could you go back to that was holding you back? Fear of failure. Fear of failure. Definitely. Yeah. The best advice that you've ever received. There's no such thing as failure. <laughs> Look, I've had so much good advice, but that one just jumped into my head because I just said fear of failure. You know, reframing everything as, you know, anything that seems like failure is just a lesson. You know, it, it just, it's just, it's happened to you for a reason so that you can take the lesson from it and it won't happen again. The very reason we are, we have reunited, right? Uh, it's, it's incredible. A personal habit that contributes to your success. What's something that no one knows, but you know, it's it's something that you do religiously every day. Is there a morning routine or something that sets you that that you know without it you wouldn't do, Lauren, the way you the way that you do? Ooh, look, that's a tricky one because a lot of my habits, my good habits, have fallen out the window this year because of the baby. But um, I mean, I guess if I had to say anything, I'd say awareness awareness of myself you know there's so many good habits you can do and that I have done and, and I will do again you know journaling meditation affirmations even exercise nutrition you know all of that is great but ultimately I think what they all give you is awareness and for me if I'm having a bad day it's it's that curiosity towards it rather than really falling into that slump of oh everything sucks for me it's like oh that's so interesting like I'm really having a bad day. I'm really, I've really spiraled today. I really feel like going and burying my head in a <laughs> in a liter of ice cream. Like, what's <laughs> happened? Like, what pattern is happening in me? Um, awareness of being in your body. Awareness of of triggers. Awareness of just just everything. The the more you can get to know yourself, however you decide to do that through coaching, personal development, events like journaling, whatever it is, the more you can get to know yourself, the I think the better that you feel and, and the more time you can spend being joyful and content and, and in flow and the less time you can spend feeling bad. And I bring that up because I'm actually, I'm in a really bad shape today. I, um, I started spiraling yesterday. I didn't feel guilty about it. You know, I didn't get myself in, in a really bad headspace about it. I, I just know that I'm heading back into overwhelm. I've taken a lot on recently, plus the sleep deprivation. My little girl's going through a developmental leap and she's teething. So rather than just really beat myself up about it, I'm just scaling back the work to the bare minimum. So those are the commitments that I had already committed to. I, you know, integrity is a value of mine. I do what I say I'll do. And I'm just trying not to overeat or do things like that that make you feel better in the short term, but worse in the long term. So focusing on that and just being aware of the thought patterns and what led me to feel this bad so that I can, you know, bring that awareness into this next time it happens. And it's, it's all about shortening the cycle, right? Like I'm very aware that I'm feeling like this. I, you know, in the past, not knowing myself very well could probably lose weeks and get into the Netflix binges and the endless Facebook scrolling and the, the overeating and, the, you know, all the bad shit that goes with when you're feeling bad. But for me, when I feel overwhelmed these days and I'm just kind to myself, I scale back the work, I do what I have to do to feel better. And within a couple of days, I'm feeling good again. And, you know, that's just a cycle. We can't all feel good all the time. And the great thing is through practice, I'm able to still show up to people and, and give everything my all, even when I am feeling like this. And that's, that's just practice, honestly, practice. And it's knowing myself. It's practice. Would you, is, is, is that something, do you practice any type of meditation to it through this journey to have that level of awareness? That is such a, that is such an important habit and something, and it's not natural, like that's something that's not innately natural to some people to bring that towards and I think that's such a key thing to for anybody that might be feeling like that to work on kind of seeing yourself from outside of yourself mm. um, yeah yeah such. look it's 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 a combination of things meditation can really help like for me it's just every everything that I've ever done oh you know I'm different now than I will be in another year's time or even another month's time. It's all just growth. Like I'm really committed to growth at the moment. The things that are really helping me with my awareness are um, acupuncture. Actually, my, my sessions of acupuncture, it's, it's a beautiful self-care ritual. And, and my guy is 
all about, you know, Eastern medicine and energy healing and, and changing all the neural pathways and tapping and all this woo-woo stuff, but it feels amazing. Um, and also I've just completed a personal development course called The Spiral, um, which is basically the outcome of that is to get more in your body and less in your head. So everything that my coach Sand taught me through that eight-week program um, is really still integrating itself in my body at the moment. Plus also, you know, the, the personal work I've done before that and the journaling and figuring out my triggers and revisiting the childhood and the childhood trauma and all of that, you know, really unpleasant shit. When I say close the, you know, close the box, don't open it if you haven't opened it. No, I mean, honestly, knowing yourself is the ultimate, the ultimate gift in life the more you can know and love yourself the the further you can soar and share your gift with the world and we all have beautiful gifts to share so getting over yourself being kind to yourself being aware of your thoughts and your patterns all of that stuff is going to help you on that journey oh lauren and the gift you've shared with your time your valuable time to uh, to be uh, again and to the tourism hub community and audience is I'm I'm so grateful to you for I will have everything on instituteofexcellence.com forward slash podcast for all of you all of the resources and all of the links to Lauren's uh, travel boot camp which you can find on Instagram and it's travel uh, the travel, the travel boot camp <laughs> travelbootcamp.com and uh and uh, you know following lauren on instagram if you haven't on or, already it's at lauren and there's an initial in the middle of it is it is it J? EP. <laughs> lauren ep bath, EP bath. See, I, I didn't even i've just yeah i've been mean, i've followed you for ages but there is an ep in there i mean i think you just start typing lauren and it'll be the first one that comes up. <laughs> i've got a blue um, tick, <laughs> a blue tick. Um, look, if uh, I uh, thank you so much. Your it, it, any parting word of the, uh, any parting words before we say goodbye to you? Oh, just be creative. I mean, humans are born creative. We we lose it. Schooling does not necessarily nurture creativity, but creativity doesn't just mean photography or being an artist. Creativity translates really beautifully into business, as I've found this year. So being able to use that creative part of yourself and and use it in your business and making your offering more attractive to potential customers and you know whatever it is that you want to do or or achieve with your business just think really creatively think outside the square COVID has definitely changed the the way that we do things and that's not necessarily a bad thing it's gotten us all out of our ruts it's gotten us all thinking and and it can be a really beautiful thing if you if you choose to look at it that way Oh, 100%. Your next event, have you got dates sorted for 2021? If anyone's interested yes. in coming to and meet <laughs> oh, look, you. We actually, <laughs> we actually don't even have it on sale at the moment. There's nothing for sale for Christmas. We reached a really interesting point this year where we have just put the brakes on. We scaled too quickly this year, a problem that not many people had during COVID, but we ended up with 16 staff at one point during the year. And, um, and it was just silly. We didn't have the foundations in place for that sort of growth. So we pumped the, blake, the, the brakes and we're slowing right down. Um, our event will be on sale again in the new year. We do have dates. It's 8th to the 10th of October in Melbourne next year for the next travel boot camp. But my business partners and I are working on a brand new offering as well. We, we really know what we want out of life and what we want to achieve and and we know our purpose and and our life's path and it's time to stop distracting ourselves with everything else we're doing and just sit down and make that dream a reality so travel boot camp in october next year and and we will also be sitting down and putting all the strategy in place for our new offering and and unleashing that on the world in 2021 brilliant i can't wait and it's in melbourne i mean that is that is very cool i'm very excited to hear about that <laughs> Well, it's thank an awesome you. Event. Oh, I um, I will definitely be on the lookout for for that eight to the tenth of October, twenty twenty one. Thank you so much. There's so much uh, there, so much goodness to, to share, and uh, maybe yeah, maybe end of year next year we can come and see what the <laughs> what the new learnings of twenty twenty one. So exciting. All the very best to you and uh, I wish you every success and we'll look forward to continuing on following your journey and being part of your community for both yeah, your personal and your business uh, journey with the Travel Boot Camp. 
I uh, thank you. Yeah, so grateful, so grateful that you that you've joined me. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, thank you to all of you for joining this episode, this incredible episode. If there's and what I love about these, here we were, was all about travelpreneurship and you know how we can traverse the gig economy but there's so much more about just the benefit of being self-aware just as we do life uh, as much as we do business. Being a good human being, being adding value, serving, being authentic, take away all of the Instagrams. I mean, that's just a good way to be. And uh, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode just as much as I have been here to share this this time in the day with Lauren. Thank you so much, Tourism Hub Podcast. It's Desi Karatsis here. Big love and be excellent to you today and every day. Thanks, everyone.